Hi folks, uh, back for part 3 of my uh, making a whirly gig lure video series. Um, I've been using a picture camera to take uh, part 1 and part 2, so now I've found this camera only has a, a capacity of 16 minutes of video, so important working operations were missed out on drilling uh, the central hole of this whirly gig. So I, I finished the hole now without having taken it. So I'm going to resemble it once more. Okay, before, you remember I used to drill with a 1.5 mil drill bit here and here. And then to uh, make the holes pass through, I'm using a substitute drill bit of a piece of wire here with a uh, bead flat at the end and ground the cutting edge to it. Di working with this uh, substitute drill bit of 1.5 mil stainless steel wire is very dangerous, so make sure never switch on the drill when the drill bit is not inserted. Although it requires guidance, otherwise it would uh, bend under the centrifugal forces and snap off and might hurt you seriously. So what I'm going to do is to uh, 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 make the uh, pre-drilled holes deeper with this thing. And now, before extending the drill, switch off uh, the drill by all means. Never uh, take it out without uh, having switched off the drill. Now do the second side. of the drill before you pull it out. Never pull it out without having the drill switched off. Okay, this operation I failed to tape in part two, but I found that I had hit it dead on. The wire shaft passes through. If it would not have passed through, I could have always had the option of using a over length drill bit 3 millimeters, but I want the hole to be as uh, small as possible to keep buoyancy to the lure. So uh, this drilling operation was the one I missed out at the end of uh, part 2. Now I'm using my action cam to continue the series and I hope it's going to be fine. Alright, the, uh, the wire shaft now passes through. So let's proceed with the further drilling work. We would now extend the rear of the hole. Uh, to accommodate the closure wrappings. Uh, since this one is having, a, I can only chuck 3 mil drill bit, I have to go to the drill press now, because I need a 5 mil diameter for this. Okay, extending the rear of the hole with the 5 mil bit. And let's see whether no, it's never large enough. I would go to uh, six mil. Okay, five point five mil, not yet six. See whether the closure wrapping fits. Fits 
rod leave rod, I still make it bigger. Now six mil. now. Okay, make it a bit deeper. Okay, fits into it. All right. Okay, after the seat of the rear hook hanger eye has been completed, I'm going to mark the uh, location of the belly uh, hook eye, which I will make here. And uh, make sure you let that hole run crosswise to the wood grain. All right. Now make an indention with the awl for the pilot hole of the belly hook hanger crosswise to the wood grain. Here's the indention now. And now pre drill with three millimeters. Use the uh, marker lines as a reference. You will clearly feel. Uh, when your drill bits uh, would have hit the uh, center, uh, central bore. Okay, since I can't drill any bigger hole than 3 mm with the Dreamer, I'm going again to extend this hole to 6 mm in the drill press. Alright, here we are again to extend the hole. This is going where our figure eight belly hook hanger is going to pass through and will be locked by the central wire shaft later. Okay? Now comes another uh, tricky uh, working operation which is uh, making the cuts for the two fins on the half portion of the lure. So first I would separate or I would make a marker line at uh, half of the length of the uh, head portion. I would draw this all the way around using the end grain as a reference to get fairly parallel. Okay, I said in part one I'm doing all this by eyeballing and experience. Okay, here's the marker line at uh, half of the entire length of the body of the uh, head section. Sorry. Now I check for the wood grain again, like the belly hole. Uh, crosswise to the wood grain, I would, this is my reference line, 
I would make this one into quarters. The diameter divide the diameter into quarters. Okay. Now extend the lines to the right. Okay, make a marker here and there. And now you would just connect this spot through this crosshairs like this down to here and the other side you must take care of the pitch not that you would they must be counter rotating I mean opposite directions otherwise you mess up okay this will be the slot of your fin divide into quarter divide into this length into quarters here half resulting in the pitch of your fin now you do not want to cut them down these, you do not want to cut these slots down to the central hole, so you make a marker here, parallel to the other line, like this. And where's the second one now? I'm confused myself. Uh-huh. This is the depth of the... Uh, the depth of the slot. They should not go as deep as the central bore for the bearing bushing. Okay. What I will do now is to uh, draw these lines with a felt pen for you to figure out better. All right. Okay. This is the path of the slot, one side and the other side. This line here. Divide into quarters, one, two, three, four, and at the qu first quarter from the outside, this is the end of the slot, passing on an angle to hit this crosshairs of this lengthwise center line and this line in center between the two ends of the lure of the head portion, here's the center, this makes up for the correct angle. Here is the depth limit line of the slot not to hit the central bore. And here, the depth line. Again, the depth not to go too deep to interfere with the central bore. The path of the slot the angle is made up of the first quarter to uh, go through this crosshairs of the lengthwise center line and the crosswise center of length. And here again the line indicating the depth of the slot. Uh, it doesn't matter if you make it this uh, way or the other, then your head would turn uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, it does not matter which direction you do this, uh, the uh, slot for the fins. Whether your head will run clockwise or counterclockwise, left turn or right turn, doesn't really matter and it's not important for the function of the lure. Okay? The fins of the whirly gig are going to be made of aluminum sheet 1mm thickness. 
So I want my slots not to be bigger than one millimeter as well, not significant, significantly bigger. So I start out making these slots with a Dreamer cutting wheel. here to keep the uh, uh, direction going straight down and parallel on the line and do the other portion afterwards. Okay. I've got an initial slot now. I, I do the rest with the saw blade because uh, this is pretty dangerous. Usually I would have placed this in a vise and do it with my uh, mitre saw, but uh, my vise is small and this thing doesn't fit inside. So let's do the other side. Okay, little flaw happened, I was off here, but well, doesn't matter, all will be covered with epoxy later. Okay, now I get my mitre saw to uh, make this slot smooth in the bottom. It's a pity. It's, uh, usually I've been making smaller whirly gigs. And uh, with a shorter head portion that I could have clamped in my vise. But this is going to be okay. It's also not that easy to do in front of the camera because I got to be, got to keep in focus. That looks okay now. Keeping the depth looks good. Now the other one. Okay. This one seems to be a bit curved. So it doesn't enter. I get this fixed. Okay. A little deeper. Okay. All right. This way you'll get a straight bottom to your slot. Now let's check if this thing fits. It's also a bit curved. Yeah. You see? Mm. Okay. I want to 
make it a bit smooth. Rough sandpaper, 60 grit. Now the second slot. Perfect. Uh, this thing could have a little more. It's a bit inconvenient to do it in front of the camera as I got to try to keep everything in focus. I can't hold it as I want to. Would have been better if I had a second person to film me. Alright, this is okay. Sadly, a little flaw happened that I cut. I'm off with the cut here. Well, it doesn't go as deep. And uh, it doesn't really matter. It will be filled up with epoxy in the end. Okay, now cleaning off the end grain is in order. Do this very careful. The very last bit is done by hand. Okay, let's get to handwork. Okay, now doing the rest so that the uh, end grain parts will be smooth and straight plane. The uh, Previously marker lines would vanish now. We do not need them anymore. Always change direction so you won't make a slam to it. Okay, now some smooth sanding, smooth sanding, and we are done with the basic woodwork. Only a little some small drillings op drilling operations left to do. Uh, you see there are some little uh, holes still in there, little imperfection spots in the end the propionate dipping will take care of these. Alright. 
what is left to do now is to extend this uh, hole at the uh, end grain of the rear section to uh, 3 millimeters. Uh, I should plug this thing before. Okay. To 3 millimeters because there's going to be a a uh, pop rivet to be inserted to act as a bearing surface for the bearing beads later. So now it sits snug. Let's see. Okay. this way. That's the assembly of the central wire shaft, bearing surface, small pop rivet, and now the uh, basic woodwork is done. I put these parts back not to lose them in my absolute mess here. So what I will do now is to uh, make some Hams, break the edges just a little, some more here, just breaking the edges a bit, I'm making a cam. that later at final assembly some kind of a glue plug could evolve there for added stability. Now I'm going to break all edges with a smooth sandpaper. I don't have to show you this. Okay. Okay. Now it's time to do the hardware. I will start out with the belly hook hanger, which is a figure eight wire form. I'm using a three mil drill bit, chucked in the vise to wrap the inner eye first. It's not that easy in front of the camera. So do it this way. All right. Now some closure wrappings. These ones have to be snug against one another. Because you do not have too much depth and space. Alright, that should be enough, and uh, snip it off. That's the inner eye. Now I would just grind this uh, tag and flush to the closure of wrappings. Uh, I would not put this on camera. Just this little uh, tag and I would grind it flush. Okay, I have ground the tag and flush now, so I would squeeze this thing flat. Oh, take bigger pliers.
for so it would pass over the wire shaft and fit in the hole. Okay, it does. All right. Okay, I've now inserted the inner eye. It's now locked in place. Now I will mark the distance of the outer eye. And uh, I would go to device now and wrap it in the same manner uh, like I did the inner eye. I would not put this on camera again. All right. Uh, just using a thicker nail for the outer eye to be a bit bigger. Not the three mil bill, uh, drill bit, but. Uh, this nail which is about four mil. Okay. The figure eight belly hook hanger is finished now. Do not make the mistake to align the two eyes. The outer eye has to be uh, 90 degrees offset to the inner eye. Uh, I've made the same mistake again before to align them, so 90 degrees offset, and uh, ground the tag ends flush again, not to protrude over the uh, closure wrappings, otherwise they wouldn't fit into the hole. Now the dry assembly, insert the belly hook eye, twist it round, you see it's locked. Okay, I think it needs to be reversed. It's better this way. Before final assembly with glue, you need to uh, to do a dry assembly. Now the pop rivet as a bearing surface, and the rear section of the welded gig is completed now. The lure is not going to be weighted. No extra ballast. So that's the rear part of the welly gig is now done. All right. Now I've cut off the length of uh, my brass tubing, uh, three by two millimeters. Uh, if cutting off in a vise, just make sure you wouldn't squeeze the uh, tubing too flat, so uh, do not clamp the vise too tight. Now I'm just uh, filing the ends plain, breaking the edges. This one is going to be inserted into the head to act as a bearing bushing, also break the inner edges, and uh, cut some grooves. added stability. Okay.
the length should be that the tubing would protrude about one to two millimeters to either side because uh, the uh, the uh, sealer propionate sealer coat and uh, top coats would add some thickness to the lure. So in the end, the uh, tubing would come to sit flush to the lure's outline. That's why you want them to have it protrude a little bit over the ends. That's about all. So uh, now you got a nice bearing bushes, bushing. Uh, this thing turns smoothly now. See? Uh, now it's time to make the fins. Okay? Okay, for the fins, I've just cut out a piece of my one millimeter aluminum sheet, beating it flat. So, uh, insert it. Flush here. And uh, now I determine about the shape of the fins. I want the fins to be bit higher, more protruding, because this will uh, increase the action of the lure. Okay, get this one out. Use shears to cut it. Oops, comes quite easy with uh, Where's my other shears now? There it comes. Okay, I stopped this. So, here's the shears for curved cuts. Okay, this is the rough cut now. Um, the more your fins would protrude over the body outline, the more action your lure would have. You, you, you could make the fins smaller, then your lure would, uh, would have a less pronounced uh, wiggle, but glide further on the surface. But with fins like this, uh, they would move more on uh, rapid jerks of your rock tip. There's a lot of room for experimenting with the fin shape. Alright. Okay, now I would just... First with 
the file, later smooth out with sandpaper, comes quite fast and easy to be done. Make sure you use aluminum because uh, brass or even stainless steel would get too heavy. Uh, maybe you could even use lexan for the fins if you don't want them to be visible, but uh, it's a two-edged blade because you want buoyancy, but on the other hand, you also want some weight to your lure to perform perform well in the end. Okay, this should be it. I can break the edges more thoroughly later. So I'll beat this thing flat now. And use it as a template for the second fin. Little imperfections really don't matter if it's one millimeter longer than the other fin doesn't matter. But still you should uh, grind it down so that the marker line would hardly be visible anymore. And then you've most likely got it to the same size like the other one. Okay. See, aluminum comes very easy to cut with shears. Go close to the marker line because the grinding would heat it up pretty much. In case it gets too hot, when grinding, put it in water or lay it flat on the steel plate to take the heat out of it. I wouldn't suggest water because uh, it might wipe away your marker line. So better put, if the part gets too hot, put it on a steel plate for a minute or two to cool down. So now I will grind this one to shape without the camera. So both fins are completed now. Fairly same size, can insert them now into their slots, yeah. okay. Um, of course, the corner must not protrude here, the corner of the fin, and they must sit flush here, not to protrude over. All right. Murphy's Law. The welly gig blank is now almost completed. You see, it turns quite easy now. 
Uh, in the water, the, the head of the whirly gig is not supposed to spin fast like a propeller lure or a globe lure, for example. Uh, these fins, they rather act as diving vanes and cause the lure to change direction. You, you could uh, kind of walk the dog on the surface, though not as pronounced with uh, like a stick bait though, and on faster reeling the lure would submerge to one to two feet of depth or one and a half feet, and at that stage under rapid uh, rod, uh, rod tip movements you could also cause it to break out randomly. Okay, it's almost finished now. One more, one more thing to do is a bearing bead for even easier spinning of the head. Okay? Um, not the bearing bead yet. I forgot to talk about one more thing that you could do. Is to put some uh, holes through the uh, blades at their base. Just to let just for better glue bond. So you will mark the outline, the transition to the body on the blades, like this. Pull them out and uh, one, two, three, one, Two, three, now uh, indentions, one, it's just about, just to drill some, some holes through there, okay? Okay, now you just drill the holes. as well I'm trying to extend the hole in this small uh, metal bead to fit over the central wire shaft I could have used bigger beads with a bigger hole but I want the bead to be as small as possible to have the gap in between the two whirly gig section as small as possible as well
Okay, let's check. Never fits over, or does it? Almost. Okay, it almost fits over. I'll continue without the camera, but that's the way how to do it. It's very tricky, and you often lose a beat in the and got to take a new one. Finally managed this most complicated drilling operation, and the beat fits over the shaft. If Murphy would leave me alone now and let, not let me lose this beat somewhere in the dirt down the shop, it's gonna be okay. So, finally the blank construction of my welly gig is finished. I'm gonna rig the hooks now. Alright. Okay, people. One trick when making such lures with rotary heads, when your raw build is completed, fix a piece of tape there. You know, this little bead is easily to be vanished. I'm lucky to have still found two nice owner trebles. You see that this thing is far enough apart that they wouldn't bind when working the lure. Because these owners are real short shanked, wide gap, pretty nice uh, hooks for such top water lures. And well, I hope all the filming would have worked out nicely. Not that I'll have disappointment again when uh, uploading the video into my computer. But you see, I'm pretty happy with this thing. And I think the way I estimated the buoyancy of the lure should still be enough. I mean, if if the water line is about here, it should be okay. Somewhere one one third to one quarter of the body volume should still stick out of the water. Um, now I'm going to take this thing apart again put all the hardware away and uh, drop it into the propionic sailor. Alright, thanks a lot for watching so far. I'm going to proceed with the sealing now. Take this thing apart. Happy it turned out well so far, apart from the first parts of the video done with the other camera. Hopefully this action cam would do better for me. Alright. Okay. Remove the hooks, taking all the hardware away, and put it into a uh, storage box. So take care of this bead especially. Put it back on the shaft maybe. So the chance of loss would be uh, minimized. Also this little rivet. Okay. Belly hook hanger. Now I've got the sheer wood blank to put into the propionate lure sealer. See, here's my store box where I store all the uh, hardware to be assembled to finish lures in the end, so I put this away. And now let's get to the ceiling. Okay, here we've got our propionate sealer, a thin mixture. This is where I'm going to place <coughs> the timber part. Uh, for uh, 48 hours. To submerge them, I've made myself this little jig so they'd stay down. I like to tip it over to seal. 
And this is where they will stay for 48 hours now for the propionate mixture to soak in as deep as possible. Um, propionate. Propionate are such plastic pellets of a special plastic mixture. You would dissolve them in acetone. To do that, you put them in such a jar of uh, Wiener or Frankfurter sausages or asparagus jar. Put propionate pellets two fingers high at the bottom and fill up with uh, acetone. Two or two and a half fingers. Stir up daily with a I'm using a piece of metal because it won't adhere to metal. It only adheres to wood, actually. And after five to seven days, it would have dissolved in the acetone. Here is a very thick mixture. This one is uh, to refill. You could dilute it with acetone to the condition you want it. This is a very thin mix. It's logical to, for better penetration. As I said, 48 hours soak of the timber parts to, for deep penetration. Afterwards, I'd let it dry for uh, one day and then do about one dozen of dips in this thicker mixture to get a uh, top coat onto the wood. Yeah. It's a very thick primer that you would buff a bit and then start to prime and paint your lures and I will show this in later parts of the video. This propionate stuff is very nice. There's only one serious drawback. It's very hard to obtain. This one was sent to me by a friend from Finland. You occasionally find it on American eBay as well. I I had a British supplier before, but which shut the shop down, and I got so much used to this stuff. It was very costly to have this sh thing shipped from Finland, had to be sent to the friend first, and the friend sent it to me, so I had to uh, pay double shipping fee, because this uh, got a shop in Finland doesn't send uh, stuff outside of Finland, so it's, and I don't want to miss it, it's just perfect. You, you saw it in my uh, other videos how good in a good condition my lures are even if they hang down in the water for one year they're still okay this is a very nice sealer okay uh 48 hours in the uh, propionate now and then i'll proceed with afterwards i'll proceed with part four of this video Thanks a lot for your interest. Hopefully it would have turned out better now with the other camera. Bye-bye. See ya in part four.